Hey guys, Rich 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 Rebuilds here, and we have the final episode of the Electric Amphibious 6x6. In the first episode, we got the old girl out of storage, tried to go for a test ride and realized that the original engine from the 70s needed a little work to be happy again. We removed the engine and stripped down everything from the City EL, such as the motor and controller, to repurpose for this build. Then I went out and I got sprockets and a new chain to connect the rest of the system. After it was all connected, we mounted the new electric motor to the old motor frame and started wiring up the controller. In this episode, we'll be finishing up the install process with more repurposing. We're actually going to use the batteries from the EV Harley Davidson build to make a battery box, installing a bilge pump because we're taking it in the water, and other general shenanigans and hoot nanny. But before we get into all this, let me give you guys a quick PSA on distracted driving. It's dangerous, and cell phones are one of the biggest causes of distracted driving related accidents. Like, where do you even put your phone on a modern car? Cheap suction cups and vent clips just don't cut it. ProClip USA specializes in high quality two part phone mounts. The mounts are machined out of high quality ABS plastic, not a cheap injection molded piece of plastic that's going to break easily. And you might pay more for a ProClip, but you'll get what you pay for. It's worth every penny. First, the vehicle mounting base is designed specifically for the exact make, model, and year of your car. I have one for the Porsche, one for the Rivian, and one for the Hellcat. It easily snaps in tightly into the seams of your dashboard panels or center console for a solid and secure fit. No professional installation required, no dismantling of your dashboard, and it takes just a couple minutes to install. You simply build your mount. The phone holder is made specifically for your phone. You choose a number of different configurations including fit or bare device. It's adjustable for devices with a case or with, with or without charging and wireless charging. Together, the two parts make a complete ProClip mounting solution. So don't settle for flimsy vent clips and suction cups. There are even ProClip mounts available to mount you on your onboard tuning devices if you wanna get ready for the track or other things. <laughs> And build your own ProClip at www.proclipusa.com and use promo code RICHREBUILDS to get 15% off your order. Let's get into this build, shall we? Also, Steven, you've been asking about him and he's alive and well. I know you all are very concerned with his well-being, especially after the accident. He is fine. He's just laying low. Right now, he's being pampered. His schedule consists of in the morning, he sun worships. Later on, he is fed natural organic grapes sliced in half. We're not animals here. Before heading to yoga for approximately 13 hours. After yoga, he gets a massage. And after his nice ethical massage, he soaks himself in pink Himalayan salt. He says he misses you guys very much. And if you want to see some more of our old antics, Tavares made a video with us in it removing his McLaren P1 battery. So make sure you check that out when you can. Let's see what's going on. All right, now we're going to do a bilge pump test. We're going to see just how much, yes. Yeah, wrong part Maybe not the battery in there. We're going to see just, it says 1,100 gallons per hour. I kind of don't believe that. But this is simulating us being out in the water and water entering the... Uh, the watercraft as quickly as possible. So now we're gonna see just what the flow in this thing is like. Contact. Oh, my oh wow. <laughs> I don't know, man. That's that's pretty good. That's pretty good. It's actually really good. It's actually outflowing the hose. That is impressive. <laughs> it's outflowing the hose. That is quite impressive. That's and pretty good, actually. Not only that, but watch watch the pump twitch. Oh, it has some torque in it. Yeah. That's that's a lot of juice, man. John, is, is that like when you wake up in the morning? Yes. Yeah. If water is entering at the rate of that, we have an even bigger problem. Right. Oh, yeah. see, it's shut off. So that's the regular okay, one. Okay, so let's then, do force. If you do force, no, will it force, keep going out? It'll keep going no matter what. Ah, okay. Whether or not the, there's enough water there, it'll, it'll cavitate. But it'll, I it'll see. Going. I mean, that's okay. still pretty good. So no, I like that feature better. Okay. Knowing that, okay, good. Good to know. Knowing that, knowing that Rich won't drown. Yeah, you, or, you're assuming I'm going out there. Or me. <laughs> you're assuming I'm going out there, brother. Uh, dude, we'll both go out. No, well, we'll go, go out there. You'll go in the water. I'll watch you from the shore. <laughs> I, you think I can swim? <laughs> Neither one of us. We'll both have floaties on. We'll both have arm floaties Well, no, then on. it's a requirement. Everybody has floaties. Everyone so has floaties. floaties, yes. So, here we are. Chad, put that thing away just, just for a little bit. Oh. You'll play with it later. All right, so right now we have a couple new things since the last time you, you saw the video. Yep. We have a new chain here. New chain? Thank you very much. Some, I gotta make some more guards for that just in case, but... Yes, because... Oh, wait, I mean guards or tensioners? 
Uh, I'm gonna put a tensioner on one, and then okay. I'm gonna put a guard up front because that sprocket we had to save that. Um, yes, because we couldn't get the parts. Yes, I saw you had to do some uh, yeah, some trimming in there because finding that sprocket for something that's made in the '70s. Yeah, it's it's. So kinda... I do what I could to save it, but I want to put a guard on it to yeah. hold against the sprocket just in case it tries to jump. So we had a big hole here, and like, well, let's fill it with something. So this is actually the water outlet port for the pump. We're gonna put that on there, root that kind of nice. And we just tested the flow. If water is entering this thing at that rate that the hose was, we have a way bigger issue exactly, <laughs> on exactly. our hands. We probably messed up somewhere. So we have the solution for the batteries. Voila. The battery box is right here. We also have this rubber foam. There's a uh, 30 feet of this, and that 30 feet is going to surround the perimeter of the Argo. Then we have the uh, clear silicone. And Chad, what is the clear silicone for? Uh, for the wires protruding out of the box. Yes, it is. So for this box, unfortunately, we couldn't get the right size. That was the IP65 waterproof. Yeah. So we have to make our own IP64, IP69. We have to elevate this because the chain's right below it. Right. So, so we have, have to make, to make some kind of bracket off. around there. So we want about this height. Yep. And right around this area, and then we can lay the batteries in, and we can make a bracket in here, hold the batteries. Correct. Actually, we should probably put the batteries in just to see mm -hmm. what they look like. Experimenting with one of them. What are you doing? You can run all four. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Ooh. Ooh. We might have to do ver. Ooh. Moment of truth. That's actually not bad at all. We can take this out. Yep. We don't need that. And the the height of the top shell yeah. is level with this. So that's, that's totally fine. We could fine. build like a platform for We have, we have to build a platform, platform anyways. What? Oh, underneath it. This, yes. uh, yeah, underneath it, yes. Yeah, okay. All right. But the top, that's fine. I mean, this is what I was worried about, is this. Right, but that's but fine. It's just, just Okay, enough. cool. All so right. We're, we're good. So these are just 12 volt contactors. When you switch in, when you get switch ignitions on, they close, mm -hmm. run the power through it so you don't you don't get the big 72 volt zip. Yep. yep. So we need we need this for the controller and for switched ignition for the controller because it requires 72 volts to turn it on it's yeah. for the ignition. Since we have a 12 volt system, we can't run two voltages unless we did a separate ignition switch. The 12 volt can run the contactor, mm -hmm. which will then turn on and off the controller. So we have our headlight switch. There's gonna be our ignition switch once it's wired in. Manual override for the bilge pump, mm -hmm. your high voltage battery meter, and your 12 volt meter. This is gonna be perfect. All right, awesome. I think my task now is to verify that all the batteries fit in here yep. and also make sure that there's a way to secure them because this needs to be bouncing around a lot. Right, we're gonna, there's gonna have to be a frame built off of this steel structure here to bolt that box to. So what we got going on here is uh, we mounted the controller. That's mm -hmm. nice and firm That's now. not going anywhere. That's not going anywhere. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I'm also gonna insulate, so the B plus and B negative are right here. Okay. I'm gonna insulate over this fuse with a piece of rubber hose. So the, in case it's rubbed down. Contactor is gonna go from here to here for B plus. And okay. then the B plus is gonna feed from here to the battery. Okay. And the B neg is gonna run with the battery. We've got the battery train. Yes, we do. Mounted it. I'm gonna do some vacuuming in here so those metal shavings yeah. don't live there forever. And then you have, oh, the bilge pump. Bilge is pump's in, in. Okay. we just, just got to tie it up so we have some mounting holes for some uh, those zip ties with the loops in them. And John went to get some uh, loom for that so we can loom this up. Some smaller, I don't have that thin loom, I just have the big stuff over yeah. there. So yeah, we should make that a little bit cleaner. The control is mostly done. Um, most of the stuff we're not using, the only one we're using is the throttle mm -hmm. and the switched ignition. 
I want to get to start experimenting with different drives because the last thing I want to do is when we're in the water, we're going to be spinning at a yes. thousand RPM and just not even going. So anywhere right now wheels. the motor is already going to spin faster than the stock gas engine. So mm -hmm. the stock gas engine I think was around 1200, 1300 RPM. Right. This does up to 8,000. So already we're already faster. Than we're already ahead of the game, right? But that had a variable clutch on it. So it was like a snowmobile clutch. Yes. So the faster it revved and once the load came off, it, what it does is it changes the, the sprocket. The ratio, the right. The ratio. Mm -hmm. And when that motor is at full tilt and there's no load on it, drive on the motor, I believe, is large. And then the drive on that is small. small. And that gives you the most speed. So what I'll do is, yeah, I'm going to measure both of those. And if I we think... can get a sprocket that's at least this size or bigger. Yep. Um, I'll do both. One, one to one will be good, but it, it, uh, right now it's under drive. So this will be one to one will be... Um, same speed as the motor, and then if you get something much larger, let's just call it ridiculous, like the Cyber Quad. The time we that we was insane. We drove the Cyber Quad. That was insane. Same idea. We'll put a nice large sprocket, and this thing should run some pretty good time. Okay, so that's what I'll do. I'm going to take another measurement of those. Uh, talk to Granger in the morning. Pick those up tomorrow, along with some other things. Seven eighths. Seven eighths. What I'm going to work on right now is I'm going to work on this shield that's going to block any water from getting in there. Yeah. So we have to check that contactor. So John, thankfully and kindly. Uh, Found some of this. I think he stole it, but that's no big deal. Um, I'm going to put this right here against uh, any water splashing on the inside of it. So we want to make sure when we go in the, into the ocean that there's not a lot of backsplash going into the, uh, the actual unit. Because if too much water gets in there, we're going to start to destroy things. So I'm going to start cutting these, putting them back there. That's just clear plexi. And I'm going to cover the entire perimeter where all the holes are. This used to be the exhaust, or sorry, the, the breathing uh, for the engine itself, and uh, we'll plug those up because there's no motor anymore. What's up with the cabbie? <laughs> yeah, a little torque there. Just a little bit. Little, yeah, that's has, has, a, has a little torque. Oh, Chad. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, we're in for a treat, aren't we? I think so. Well, I, I wasn't even full throttle. That was, that was only half. Yeah, maybe we, need, maybe we don't need that sprocket after all. I don't know. Sprocket. This thing's terrifying. I said we sprocket anyways. <laughs> sprocket. I, <laughs> I mean, it rips for, compared to what it used oh, to. Oh, are you kidding me? This you you went way faster. I bet this you. thing this thing couldn't go two seconds without without breaking down before. <laughs> I had to slam my knee in the dashboard to hold myself. Dude, to this is crazy. Oh my. <laughs> Joey, just doing, let's get a close up on this. Right? It's disgusting, isn't it? <laughs> okay. So this is all you need is throttle. Okay. Uh, so down is forward and up's reverse. Go Middle up. is neutral. Middle is neutral. So now you have to blip the throttle a little bit to get it in reverse. Probably, probably turn on. Yeah. Yeah, 
Yeah, you, you have to accelerate then go. <laughs> That's horrifying. Isn't it scary? <laughs> There's nothing to hold on to. That's what I'm <laughs> saying. <laughs> you're like, you're gonna gonna die. To, if you hold on to the sticks, the sticks keep showing. Oh, there. oh, your foot, your oh. foot kicked it through. That's what. It, I mean, oh. how do you do that? Is that kid dying down there? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna get killed. Dude, this thing is this thing is kill. All right, Argo versus Jeep. All right, line up, line up, line up. Okay. You going forward? I'm forward. We're gonna go on uh, on three. All right. Want to do a three honk? All right, three. Yeah, three honks, three honks. <laughs> no. <Ooh! Hit. laughs> ah, he's coming! He's coming! All right, the uh, first ride was a success. When we pull this, we have nice, these aren't even LEDs. No. Those should be LEDs. But what's happening is we have all these halogen stuff and it's not good for the battery. It's also not very bright. So we found a set of uh, fog lights from the Sequoia. <laughs> these are LED, we're gonna use these instead to make this uh, a little bit nicer. All right. You wanna do the honors, Chad? Sure. How does this look? Boom. Wow, what a difference. Yeah, that's that's a wide beam. That's a huge, that's a great, look, look at that, look at this. I can't wait to see that thing out there. Look at that beam. All right, the next aspect of things I wanna focus on is safety. And as of right now, I do not have a master cutoff switch on this. I bought this master cutoff switch from a marine store. By the way, I hate marine stores. They are super overpriced. I wanted to use the master cutoff switch from the Harley, but I can't find it, so I was forced to buy a new one. Now, for this switch, you wanna mount it in the place that's somewhere in the cabin, but unfortunately, because this is watertight, or waterproof, I should say, you don't wanna drill into the hull. So unfortunately, it can't go there. I wanted to have it at the back plate where the shifter is. Can't be mounted there either. Can't mount it here on that plate because the chains are there, and I don't want high voltage wiring to go where the chains are, especially underwater, which that could be filled with water at some point. So I decided, believe it or not, to actually have it either here or back here. I'm more leaning towards the very back. This is mostly for safety and, and first responders so they can quickly disable the vehicle. And as a matter of fact, when I'm sitting in the vehicle, if I just reach back, I could easily crank the switch and shut the master power button off. So what I wanna do, I got a hole saw. I'm gonna cut a hole right here, right in the center. Uh, and I'm actually gonna have this switch uh, recess so it fits a little bit better uh, onto the uh, onto the body of the thing itself. Okay, so as I'm doing this, uh, I cut the hole, and now I have to cut the positive wire back a little bit uh, to install into the master cutoff switch. But I want to show you these zip ties that I got from a buddy of mine. It says B is for build on it. I'm using B is for build's uh, zip ties on this. So uh, thanks, man, for these. Thanks. All right, ready? Am I good? Yeah, you're good, probably. <laughs> How smooth that was. Okay. What's all this, Joey? Yeah. I know how things go. So a <laughs> There's no helmet and elbow pads and knee pads?
Hold on. Oh, the bilge pump's working. That's good and bad. That means I'm taking on water. Yeah. Oh, it's automatic. It's doing it. That's a lot of water. <laughs> Is it you see it working? Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's still pouring out? Yep. It's taking on some water. There you go. I am taking on water. See? Is it still coming out? Oh yeah. It's working though, which is kind of cool. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm gonna try to go out one more time. Let's see how far I get, right? So I'm taking for real. Dude, it's still pouring out water. Oh, this thing just took on it. Wow. Let's see how long it takes for the pump to stop pumping out water. There you go. Oh, I can see it. Hold on. That's why we have the bilge pump, guys. So right now, it hasn't touched the motor yet, but you can see it coming through the rear axles. Um, it's working, though. The water is definitely uh, not coming in as fast as this thing could pump, but it's pumping all the uh, water out right now, so I'm still pretty good. Uh, what I could do is I could try to make it as far as I can, hopefully without sinking, but uh, I don't know if this pump could keep up, which I think it might, but... Is it really worth it? I don't know. Okay, am I sinking in the back? Yeah, a little bit. Oh yeah, those chains are underwater big time. All right, why isn't your pump on? Huh? Is your pump on? It is on. Oh, good. Can you hold on? Can you see it pumping at all? Oh yeah. Now, is it covering the bilge pump, the water level? No, not or yet. No. It's getting close. How's that? A lot of water. I know. Bill's pump works. Kind of cool to see though. Oh, working really well. Getting a little low in the back. Oh, some water in there. Yeah. Is it still pumping it out? Yep. You're gonna be getting near the electronics. Water's getting close to the electronics. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Thank you.
I'm, Joey, look at this thing. Look at this. Someone didn't put in the plug again. It was there's trash there. <laughs> Are you serious? <laughs> Come on, John. Is there a pre? Is there like a pre-launch inspection we're supposed to do? Ah, uh, we failed. That plug wasn't even in. That's where all this thing was coming from. It was just trash well, in that hole. Maybe it's not that bad. So yeah, maybe. So that's that was there on purpose, obviously, to help drain it. We put a plug on the other side. There was no plug on this side, so that definitely didn't help. Who does? I love it. Who does this? Oh, jeez. All right. Well, Zara, thanks for helping us out. Appreciate it. Okay, so here's a post-mortem on the 6x6 Argo. It actually went pretty well, unfortunately, minus that plug that was missing. But just a couple technical details that I may have missed. Uh, I really did want to go across the entire uh, lake there. Unfortunately, I couldn't do that because it was just taking on too much water. It looks like everything was below this battery level. And just to give you guys a heads up, you might say to yourself, why would you put the batteries in that stupid Tupperware case? Well, I'll tell you. This is actually uh, waterproof, this case, and the batteries themselves are also waterproof as well. So these batteries are meant to go in an electric bicycle, an electric motorcycle of some sort. So they're already water resistant and they're very well sealed. So even though they're in this box, they're still protected even by themselves. What started happening was the rear end of the Argo started sinking more and more into the water, and I didn't want to get water to get past this controller portion, so I decided to end things. But I'm glad I have all these safety switches intact. I mean, everything worked, I gotta say, pretty, pretty well, uh, considering it was the first time in the water. This is, uh, I would consider this project is done. I don't even think I need a second bilge pump because this thing was pumping some serious volume considering how much water is actually getting on the inside of this thing. But everything works well, the lights work. I would say this is a pretty good success. That's pretty cool. And guys, don't forget to check out Pro Clip USA in the description box below for your own device mount holders. What are we gonna do now? Some ASMR. Enjoy guys.